Covey, don't eat the grouse feathers. Now you listen to what I have to say about the 444 Marlin. You like the 444 Marlin? Do you? Does it bring down birds? No, never use it for birds, do we? So you don't care, do you? All right, you just say and listen, you might learn something. <laughs> Hey everyone, Ron Spomer now. What is this about milk replacement 444? What am I talking about? In the cattle business, you replace the mother cow milk with milk replacer. And that's what they did with the 444 Marlin when they no longer had the 4570 government. Now let's back up and explain all of this. In 1873, the government came out with a 4570 cartridge and it was pretty popular, pretty beloved for a long time. But boy, around the 1950s into 1960 or so, it had fallen by the wayside. Not a lot of demand for it. Everybody was going with the new racy cartridges and the new magnums and stuff. And so they quit building 4570s, quit chambering for them pretty much. And, uh, well, it didn't take long. A lot of guys thought, I still need a good large caliber deer woods rifle. Something a little more powerful than the 3030 Winchester. They liked the 4570, but they couldn't get it anymore. So Remington, in conjunction with Marlin, designed the 444 Marlin. That was supposed to be the replacement for the 4570. Though the question today is, did it do the job? Which one is better? We're going to do a head-to-head -head and find out if the 444 Marlin is the replacement for the 4570 or if it's just the same old, same old in another package. So first of all, there is a difference in the diameter of the bullets, of course. This is a 45. This is not a 44. <laughs> they called it the 444 Marlin because... You can't beat 444 for numbers in cartridges going clear back to the 44 Henry Flat, the 4440 Winchester Centerfire. Oh, uh, 44s boy. were big deal. 45s, of course, with the Colt, that was the same thing. That's going to catch people's ears. But the actual diameter of the bullet is 0.429. At least it's, a, it's supposed to be. I measured this one and it was less than that. But some of them are more like 0.430. And they're a little bit different. And it's usually the case with bullets and cartridges and all of these nominal dimensions. Uh, they're specific, but at the same time, you've got a little fudge room there. So just figure you're working with a 0.43 inch diameter bullet on the 444 Marlin and a 0.458 on the 4570 government. What's going to happen when you shoot these guys? Well, they're both going to kill deer. <laughs> They're just much, pretty much proven deer killers. And before we get into exactly what they do, I want to introduce one more into the competition because a lot of guys don't on the 44 Rem Mag, that little revolver cartridge, thinking that is just really powerful stuff. And of course, Dirty Harry told us as much, the world's most powerful handgun cartridge, which wasn't even then, and it certainly isn't now. And as you can see with the little matchup right here, it's not going to hang around with these guys. Now, this also takes a 0 0.430 inch diameter bullet. So we'll slide it over here beside the 444 Marlin. So we will do some numbers to compare this stuff. But of course, you've got to realize, and I think you do, this little revolver cartridge is going to be traveling a lot more slowly out of a short barreled revolver. So we will figure some numbers on it in a rifle. There are some rifles chambered for it. In fact, the model 92 lever action Winchester, pretty popular chambered in the 44 Remington Magnum. So we'll use an 18 inch barrel to get our velocities off of this one. And I think we're using a 20 or 22 inch barrel off the 444 and the 4570. I've forgotten exactly which barrels I think. I took my data from the Hornaday hand loading manual. Don't eat the cartridges, Cubby. That's not good for you. And we're going to find out what they do. Are they great deer cartridges? Are they good elk cartridges? Remains to be seen. Here are the numbers, 444 Marlin with the 265 grain FTX. I put in those rubber tipped more higher BC type bullets because someone is surely going to say, yeah, that wasn't fair, you used a flat nose. Well, most of the 4570s, of course, were flat nosed around those bullets because they're in lever actions many times. And uh, these were designed and built for the Marlin 336. That's a specific um, rifle that the 444 was built for. So you know that they'd figured on flatten those bullets. 
in the tubular magazine, but now with these flex tip bullets, you do get a little bit higher BC. So I used my numbers from that Hornaday manual using the fl flexible tip bullets for both of those. Didn't with the revolver because they don't, uh, they don't have them in that one and you can't shoot the same weights. I tried to be fair and balance this out. So you'll notice I'm using a 265 grain bullet in the 444 Marlin and a 325 grain bullet in the 4570. Now some will say, well, that's not fair. They're different weights. Yeah, but look at the BCs. Those are pretty close. 0.225 for the 444, 0.230 for the 4570. That is a fair way to judge their potential. Since they're different calibers, you've got to kind of balance that out. So we're going to push those to the pretty much recommended top velocities. And we get in the 444, 3,113 foot-pounds of energy. That's what most guys shooting these big 44s and 45s are looking for. Lots of punch. To get that, we have to drive at 2,300 feet per second. Now, the 4570 is pushing that slightly higher BC bullet. Not quite as fast, but it is getting more energy at the muzzle because it has more weight. So, 2,150 feet per second for the muzzle velocity. The energy is 3,336. So a little bit of an advantage in muzzle energy to the 4570 government. How will that translate downrange? Let's find out. Now we zeroed these to be no more than three inches high and that happens somewhere between 80 and 100 yards on all of these. So the 100 yard impact was the three inches high with both of these. The wind deflection was the same at two roughly. There's some tenths of an inch difference in there. And that's expected because their BCs are close. And the energy is still 2,233 foot pounds of energy at 100 yards out of the 444, 2,389 foot pounds out of the 4570. So they're both fairly close. Little advantage for the 4570. Now we get to 200 yards, you're going to start to see the differences in drops and drifts and whatnot. So the drop is only 1.7 inches out of the 444, while it's three inches from the 4570. There's your flatter shooting cartridge. The 444 wins in that category. Also wins in wind deflection. 8.7 inches of deflection out of the 444, 9.4 for the 4570. But the 4570 still is the energy champ. 1,684 foot-pounds of energy at 200 yards versus 1,570. Close, but got to give it to the winner, 4,570. Out at 250 yards, you've got 8.7 inches of drop versus 11 inches of drop. So once again, the 444 Marlin is winning in the flat shooting category, and it's got an inch advantage on wind deflection. So that one is just not a big deal, I don't think, for either of them. This is why I say it's the replacement. Energy, you've got about 100 foot-pounds more energy out of that 4570. Is a deer or even an elk going to notice? I don't think so. So with that drop of 11 inches at 250 yards out of the 4570, I think you're seeing pretty much the end of the rainbow on the trajectory with that guy. And that's why both of these are considered 200, 250 yard cartridges. Now, how does that compare with the little old 44 Rem Mag, which a lot of guys like to shoot in both handguns and rifles. We're going to give it the advantage of the longer barrel in the rifle and see what it can do. Um, 1,700 feet per second out of an 18 inch barrel. And boy, look at that. The muzzle energy is almost exactly the same as the velocity. That's something different. 1,701 foot-pounds of energy. And I zeroed that guy at 135 yards in order to not go any higher than three inches above. And that happened at around 80 yards. The result at 100 yards was it was 2.6 inches high, drifted 3.6 inches in that 10 mile an hour right angle wind and hung on to just over 1,000, 1,108 foot-pounds of energy. That pretty much tells you you're running out of steam for a pretty dependable whitetail cartridge at about 100 yards with that 44 mag. At 200 yards, man, your energy's down to 756. You're dropping a foot and you're blowing 15 inches in that wind. It really isn't a 200-yard cartridge. 250 yards, forget it, 30 inches of drop, 24 inches of wind deflection, and you're way down at 653 foot-pounds of energy. This is why the 444 Remington Magnum is not the world's most powerful cartridge, <laughs> handgun, or anything else. But, you know, if you're in a straight wall state, some of them won't allow either of these, the 444 or the 4570, because they're too long. The uh, cases themselves, as you can see, are identical in length. 
The 4570 is a little bit fatter. Uh, actually, the 444 is, you know, it's the same diameter at the head, just above the uh, rim as the 30-06, 0 0.470 nominally. And for those of you who are not that familiar with the 30-06, 308, you know that guy, same diameter at the head there. But of course, you're pushing that straight wall all the way forward. And then the bullet seats fairly deeply in there. But it gives you an idea how it fits into the category. So straight wall cartridge, a little bit too long for some states, legal in some others. Is it uh, equal to 4570? I think the numbers support that. If you're looking for a straight wall cartridge with the kinds of punch that the 4570 is famous for, I think you'll get it with the 444 Marlin. Unfortunately, or weirdly perhaps, the 444 Marlin, despite coming on with a pretty good head of steam in 1964 when it came out, has sort of fallen by the wayside and the 4570 has come back. And I think they can credit a lot of that to the popularity of cowboy shooting, cowboy action shooting, where you have to use the old cowboy cartridges. And the 4570 was in a lot of old lever actions, as well as the single shots from back in the day. And it just seems like guys have gone back to that. So uh, I don't know if anyone's chambering for the 444 Marlin anymore. You know, the new Marlin lever action from Ruger, which took it over, has come out in 4570, but it's not in 444 Marlin. Whether it ever will be, I don't know. It'd be interesting to find out. But if you have a good old Marlin 336 chamber for the 444, you essentially have yourself the ballistic equivalent of the 4570. So you might as well enjoy it if you can find the ammunition. And I'm sure there's plenty of it still out there. Hornady obviously loads it. You can get those sexy rubber tipped bullets to help your ballistics coefficient and your downrange performance. But if you're looking for a good woods rifle in the lever action and you want that extra diameter bullet for the extra punch, uh, either the 4570 or the 444 Marlin should do the job for you. Um, but just remember, you're probably not going to be reaching much farther than about 250 yards with either one of them effectively. So enjoy your big boars for deer hunting in the lever action woods rifles. Um, I think you've got a couple of good ones to pick from. The 444 Marlin and the 4570 Government. They're still hanging around. Well, this is Ron Spomer. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, hunt on or stand. Shoot straight. <laughs> Good girl. You want to go chase some birds now? Let's go get them. Come on, let's go get them, Covey. Come on, let's go. Mm -hmm.